Although a huge part of the fitness community supports that training to failure is better for muscle growth compared to non-failure training, science says different. I was able to identify a similar trend in the studies that have been done on this topic that determines which practice is the best for muscle growth and which comes second and third. Spoiler alert, failure comes second, and this is going to be a surprise for many people that know these three studies that showed that training to failure is better for muscle growth compared to non-failure training. However, there is a hidden piece of information on this data that changes everything. You see, they didn't compare failure sets with just any type of non-failure training. They compared failure sets with the not-so-popular practice of non-failure sets with 6-3 to three reps in reserve. And what is reps in reserve? Reps in reserve, or RIR, is a scale proposed by Dr. Zurdos in his 2016 paper. In this scale, an RIR of 0 equates to training to failure, an RIR of 1 equates to stopping one repetition before failure, and an RIR of 2 equates to stopping two repetitions short of failure. In the case of the study I mentioned, 6 to 3 RIR would mean that half participants stop 6 to 3 repetitions before failure and they were compared with participants that went all the way to failure. So I think it's safe to say that training to failure is better at stimulating muscle growth compared to training with 6 to 3 reps in reserve. And I think this is an important distinction that we need to make. Most people compare failure training with non-failure sets in general that can be anywhere between 1 to 10 reps in reserve. In my opinion, this is neither fair nor accurate. You see, comparing 3 to 6 reps in reserve with failure is completely different than comparing 2 reps in reserve with failure. My question then is what if there were studies that compared failure to 3 to 1 reps in reserve, which is something more commonplace in hypertrophy training? Luckily, there are 4 studies that compared failure sets with non-failure sets of 3 to 1 reps in reserve showed no differences in muscle growth. So when the intensity of effort gets lower than 3 reps in reserve, the extra benefit of training to failure diminishes. This puts 3 to 1 reps in reserve in second place with failure. Even more, in a study from Carroll and colleagues in 2019 that compared similar intensities of effort, authors reported significantly better results in the non-failure group. So according to the literature, when comparing failure to 3 to 1 reps in reserve, it is either the same or 3 to 1 reps in reserve slightly better. But there are 4 cons of failure training that make the 3 to 1 reps in reserve practice the best of the two and one pro of failure training that still make failure sets necessary for a small part of your training. Let's start with the 4 cons. Number 1. Training to failure demands more effort and if it is shown by the literature that this more effort doesn't provide more results, then there is no reason to do it. Remember that everything that we do in a training session needs to have a reason. Number two, training to failure increases recovery time. This was proven also by a 2017 study where authors found that training to failure increased the time needed for recovery. This lets you train fewer times during a training period and accumulate less training sessions, aka less volume. And why is that detrimental? Because according to the literature, training volume is one of the main driving factors of muscle growth, so a reduction in training volume would lead to reduced muscle gains. Also related to the training volume, the third con is that training to failure in every set will probably reduce also the training volume of your session. To give an example, if you were to do a set to failure at 12 reps, you probably do 10 on the second and less than 10 on the third. This adds up to 30 reps. In contrast, if you were to do 12 reps with 2 reps in reserve for 3 sets, you'll end up doing 36 reps. As we said, more training volume equals to more gains. So training to failure can also decrease the training volume of each session. And number 4, training to failure increases the risk of injury and overtraining, especially if performed in compound movements. These have been suggested by multiple papers on the topic. So the easy conclusion that I make of all this is that 3 to 1 reps in reserve training is probably better and safer for muscle growth. It doesn't exhaust you and enables you to accumulate training volume by doing more reps per session and more sessions per week. Even more, it helps you maintain a low risk of injury and avoid overtraining. This recommendation is not only in agreement with the Carroll paper that found the non-failure group to have more results in muscle growth, 
but also with a systematic review and meta-analysis from 2017 that compared non-failure training to failure training, but this time on muscular strength. They found no differences between the two practices. They concluded that it seems unnecessary to perform failure training to maximize muscular strength and that this practice should be performed sparingly to limit the risks of injury and overtraining. However, specifically to muscle growth, training to failure occasionally is essential at least for one reason. And this comes by our inability to correctly estimate how many repetitions are left to failure on each set. What this means is that most of us that will try to train with one or two reps in reserve will probably train eventually with three or four reps in reserve. This is the same for both trained and untrained individuals, as was shown by a 2017 study by Hackett and colleagues. In this study, authors reported that participants couldn't correctly estimate their repetitions to failure regardless of their training level. And this is where training to failure comes handy. You can use failure sets at the last set of an exercise to test if you're truly training at the intensity you want. For example, let's say that you want to do 4 sets of 10 bicep curls with 3 reps in reserve. By the end of the first set, you should have 3 reps in the tank. On the second and third, around 2 to 1, and the fourth one would be very close to failure. However, if you try to go all the way to failure at your fourth set and you do more repetitions than expected, then you know that you need to adjust the weight of the exercise. And I know that many of you are probably thinking right now, why not do a failure set at the end of each exercise? Well, you shouldn't because this is exactly what Carol and colleagues did in 2019. And if you remember, they found that the non-failure group had more results in muscle growth than the group that did a failure set at the end of each exercise. So using it as a daily practice is probably not a good idea. And it's probably better to use it sparingly every two or more weeks just to test if you're on the right track. And I know that there are still two popular arguments in favor of failure training that might make some people skeptical of these results. The first one is the claim that training to failure is better because it elicits full motor unit recruitment, which is considered to be an essential component when training for muscle size. However, there is evidence to support that motor unit recruitment can be maximized without the need of resistance training to failure. A 2012 study found that full motor unit activation was achieved 3 to 5 repetitions prior to failure. In addition, according to this 2006 paper, high threshold motor units are recruited almost immediately when lifting very heavy loads, as high levels of force are required from the onset of the exercise. And the second argument is that training to failure is more suitable for untrained individuals or more suitable for trained individuals. However, the literature has shown contradicting results from zero to more than five years of training experience. What I want for you to understand is that the only consistent factor in all these papers is the repetitions to failure. Until new research comes to light, training with three to one reps in reserve is probably the most effective method to increase muscle growth. This, however, begs the question of what is the optimal rep range for muscle gains. So, based on science, are 8 repetitions better than 12 repetitions for muscle hypertrophy? This is going to be the topic of my next video, so make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out. To everyone out there, thanks for watching and I'll see you all next time.